In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So up evils in the midst of grace. That's what I'm going to talk a little bit about in this video. And um, the reason I want to talk about this is because I think it's important for us to understand that with everything that's going on in the world, that grace is available to us right now in this moment. And we need to be open to that. And I've mentioned before in other videos that where, where darkness seems to be enveloping the world, at the same time, we should be being elevated in spirit. We should be growing in holiness. And one of the things that I see happening, um, not with just some of the comments in the videos, um, but just in general, is that uh, believers are, are beginning to be shaken. They're starting to worry about loved ones or they're worried about, you know, the country or they're worried. And it's not, that's not a bad thing per se, but it can become a bad thing if it overtakes um, our focus or takes our focus off of Jesus and Mary. And because that is where we need to stay focused. That has to be the main thing. And that way, as long as we're staying focused on Jesus and Mary, the storm around us uh, can't affect us. So I think it's, it's a good idea for us to every now and then ask ourselves, you know, am I allowing the storm to affect me? And it does, it happens to all of us. And so, you know, it can, it can trigger anxiety. It can trigger um, uh, frustration. It can trigger uh, anger. It can trigger worry. Um, it can trigger despair. Um, you know, all those kinds of things. And see, these are human things that we're going to experience, um, especially in the times we're living in. I mean, you know, I don't know, again, how anyone can't see what's happening around us and what's happening in the world and where the way the world is headed. Um, some of the things going on are just pure evil. It's like right out in front of us anymore. Um, but the most important thing, again, is to stay focused on Jesus. The most important thing is trust, as I've said before, because fear, anxiety, worry, all of that stuff is human, but it's useless. And so we, we have to always come back to be centered on Christ, focused on Jesus, focused on Our Lady, and um, and that way, the the things around us we're not we're not overtaken by them, and so trust in God, trust in His divine providence, trust in His divine will, and trust that He He cares far more than we ever could, and so when we're concerned about someone, He is more concerned. When we want their salvation, He wants their salvation, and. God is in the business of saving souls. He'll find a way to do that. And we need to trust that and, and not allow Satan to use the, the human things that we feel normally um, against us. You know, we need to be really on guard about that. So um, with that being said, I also want to touch on a point real quick is the, the dream that I had talked about in a number of videos back Again, where I saw everybody was like kind of stunned or something. And then I tried to evaluate or elaborate on that and kind of say, you know, what I was experiencing or what I sensed people were experiencing. I don't want to speculate on that anymore. You know, I know there's been some other questions and that kind of thing. I'm not going to speculate it on it anymore. What I will say is this. If the dream was from God, if it is in fact pointing to something that's that's going to come. Um, and again, I'm always very careful with these things. Um, I can tell you this, you'll know it when it happens. And so the, I, I just want to kind of leave that right there. Okay. When it, when it happens, people will know it, that that's what it is. And so that I know from the dream, that's probably the best way I should have said it from the beginning that way. Um, because it just makes it more clear. You'll just know. So, and I don't, I, I, for me to speculate on it um, or try to wonder or figure it out is really kind of a waste of my time as well. So um, I think I, I, it's better if I just leave it at that. 
So <clears throat> anyway, I want to talk about uh, upheavals in the midst of grace, okay? And so we see a lot of things happening in the world. I don't know how many people uh, or how many of you guys watching this video now have been paying attention to the weather uh, in the United States, um, overseas, um, in Italy. It's, it seems to be like going crazy. You know, there's just flooding and rain and, you know, softball hail. <laughs> it's just, it's, it, I don't know, maybe I just wasn't paying attention before, but it seems to be happening uh, quite often. I know in California, I read that we are in the worst drought. I think it was either a thousand years or 2000 years. So California is drying up um, big time. There's not a lot of water. And um, the, the policies that have been put in place um, aren't helping in any way, shape or form. So um, anyway, that's might be something, you know, that might interest some people. It might be something to keep an eye on as well. Um, I think it's really important to make the point that we need to, again, stay focused on Jesus, especially in the Eucharist. We need to stay true to the church and in the church. And, um, you know, the, the frustrations I see out of some and, uh, you know, attacking the Pope um, if you want to call it that or correcting the Pope, if you want to call it that, you know, some of it may be valid, but it, uh, it doesn't do any good and it's not going to change, uh, what's coming. It's, it's not going to help. And so, you know, I want to make that point. The most important thing is to pray, um, no matter what you see, no matter what you hear, don't leave the church, stay in the church. And, um, that's the, that's the safest place to be. That is the ark, you know, over and over and over again, scripture is clear. The Lord is my refuge. The Lord is the refuge. The Lord is, uh, protects the just over and over and over again. So we have to understand that the, the church is the ark and that's where we want to be um, and continue to, to, to grow in holiness and grow in love and grow in the virtues is, is the most important thing. Um, that we can do and we can't be you know allow all of these voices around us to get us distracted or confused and so that's the most important thing is to listen to the voice of god to listen to the voice of jesus to listen uh, to scripture you know read it out loud as i've said before um and and to pray you know to grow in holiness and so um with the upheavals that are coming in the world, that are going on in the world, you know, or the rosary being attacked, um, there were a number of nuns, I think it was in Nigeria or in Africa, I'm not sure. One, Anyway, they were a number of them were kidnapped recently. Um, a bishop was uh, arrested in another country. You know, it, the persecutions of the church are happening all over the world, and we're really not feeling it in the United States. Um, in the way that uh, people are feeling it in other countries. And so, you know, we don't, we're not getting a real good sense of that, but the church is being persecuted now more than it ever has been. And so these persecutions and these, uh, these upheavals and these, these abuses of power and government, they're going to increase. Um, the things we happen, see happening in nature um, is going to increase. Uh, nature itself will react to sin. And, and I think we're seeing the beginning of that now. Um, it, you know, it's, uh, it, I can't see it in any other way. You know, for me, the chastisements have already begun. You know, when I, when I look at, again, when I was looking at the weather, it was just incredible. And um, the thing we need to understand is that grace is being poured out now. And we have to be open to receive that grace. And Satan will use these things around us, the upheavals in the world, you know, the, the government's taking over, you know, the whole idea of a great reset or World War III or, um, you know, pandemics and, you know, the IRS being armed and all that. He'll, Satan will use all of that to distract us and to get our eyes off of Jesus. And that's where we want to stay. We want to stay focused 
on Jesus. And this is what I mean by upheavals in the midst of grace. We have to stay focused on the grace. We have to stay focused on him so that we receive the necessary grace to be able to weather the storm that is not only coming, but has already begun. And so um, with that being said, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, what the gift of divine mercy is or how I understand it. And because it is so profound and so beautiful, it's beyond anything we could possibly comprehend. And I think if, I think if, we, if we had a better understanding of what the gift of divine mercy is of what the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary is, we'll have a much easier time navigating through um, the, coming, the coming times. And so um, with that being said, I'm gonna move into a couple of things here. I have some bullet points that I wanna speak on. Um, I'm gonna be reading from a book with the messages, uh, two of the messages, one is from Father Gobi, the other one is from um, Elizabeth um, Kindleman, and then, uh, some scripture. So I'm going to go ahead and move into that now. And hopefully I want to try and keep it really basic without going into too much of the theology and that kind of thing. And, um, and just, again, just try and keep it basic and just hit these points so that it can be better understood of what we're looking at. And so we have to begin with, um, with Adam and Eve. Okay. And, and as I said before, in previous videos, when Jesus was crucified and rose from the dead, he turned history, not only physical history, but the spiritual history on its head. And, and we started heading back in the, in the opposite direction. In, in other words, back towards the garden of Eden. And the reason that we have to start with Adam and Eve is because they lived perfectly in the will of God. So much so that they neither one of them even knew or understood that they were naked. And when the sin happened, death entered the world and man became ashamed. And he lost that dignity, that glory that he once held. And God being a loving God, as we read in Genesis, made clothes and garments for them to cover up their shame. What God was doing was already beginning to restore their dignity of who they are, of who we are. And so we have to start with Adam and Eve because that's where we're going. So Adam and Eve lived perfectly in the divine will of God. And when sin happened, that first sin contaminated everything not only Adam and Eve, okay, and all of their offspring through original sin, but all of creation became contaminated and death entered the world, okay? So one of the things I think that's really, really important for us to understand is that the kingdom of God or a portion of the kingdom of God was Eden. It's where we live, it's the earth, it's creation itself. And that is the portion of the kingdom that has been invaded by darkness. And that is in fact, the portion of the kingdom that we are fighting for. This is why the church on earth is called the church militant. There's nothing to fight for in heaven, it's already done. Purgatory is a purifying fire to purify the souls so that they can go to heaven and, and be in the perfect kingdom, live in the perfect divine will of God. Nothing unclean enters heaven. Right? So the kingdom, the battle is taking place here. And we have to understand that first and foremost, and we have to take it very, very seriously because it is, it is not only a spiritual reality, but it is the reality in which we exist. And when, when our eyes are open to that reality, that's when the war becomes real. And when the war becomes real, faith increases. And we understand that the upheavals in the world that happen around us have absolutely no power whatsoever over the love of God, over the blood of Jesus Christ that was spilled for our redemption and over the resurrection of Jesus himself. 
nor does it have any power over Mary's yes. And so from Adam and Eve, that's where I want to bring you to, is to Mary. Because Mary is the only human being created by God that lived in the divine will perfectly. This is one of the reasons the church calls her the new Eve. She is without sin, conceived without sin, and never committed sin. In other words, she lived in the divine will perfectly. Now, why is this so important? Because the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, as promised at Fatima, the period of peace, the triumph of the church, is the fulfillment of the Our Father prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means that people that are on earth have to live perfectly in that divine will. This is where the writings of Luisa Picaretta become so profound and so important. Okay, so we have from the writings, I believe, of Father Gobi speaking about the warning as prophesied at Garabindal, in which every single person will see themselves in the light of divine truth is a gift from God to prepare us to receive the gift of divine mercy. So why is it so important for us to understand what the gift of divine mercy is? I'll get to that in a minute. The, the, the words that Our Lady spoke when she said, those who have not prepared themselves, there is no more time. They are going to see the warning now or this illumination of conscience now as a judgment or as a punishment or as a warning, okay? The people who have prepared themselves, and I'm talking spiritually through confession, through receiving the Eucharist, through reading the scriptures, through the consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, consecration to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, consecration to St. Joseph, um, making the first five Saturdays of reparation, praying the rosary. We have prepared ourselves to receive this gift. In other words, the warning will be for us a grace, okay? It will probably be painful for us to experience. Um, I know it will be for me, and I can say that beyond all doubt because I'm gonna see all the places I've failed all the things that I should have done that I didn't do, even after the, the initial experience, okay? But we will see it as a grace. Now, when you look at the writings of Father Gobi, this warning event is to prepare us to receive the gift of divine mercy. So what is this gift of divine mercy? Well, it's tied into the writings of Elizabeth Kindleman. It is the flame of love of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Now keep in mind what I said prior about five minutes ago. Mary was the only human being ever created by God to live in the divine will perfectly. Now Jesus lived in the divine will perfectly, but he was not created. Jesus is. You see, that's the difference. So I'm talking human, okay? Jesus was human and divine. Mary, human. She is the only human being created by God to live in the divine will perfectly. <clears throat> so this outpouring of love, different from the warning, okay? This outpouring of love. Imagine a dam that has a crack, okay? A dam just doesn't, it doesn't just burst. It, there's a crack and then it begins to leak a little bit and then it begins, you know, it's, it cracks somewhere else, it leaks a little more, then leaks, and all of a sudden it just breaks open. That's the way this grace works. That's the way this is going to happen. That's the way it's working now, okay? We're being given extraordinary graces now. People all over the church um, are, are receiving extraordinary graces. And this is, she, Our Lady and Jesus want this for everyone, okay? This, all this has to do with the whole thing has to do with healing the world. That is the message of divine mercy. I do not wish to punish aching mankind, but I wish to heal it by pressing it to my merciful heart. That is the Eucharist, 
Okay, eventually that's where it ends up. That is the triumph of the church, a Eucharistic reign of Jesus, a period of peace, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, in which the flame of love of Mary is poured out over the earth, renewing the face of the earth and giving away, giving way to an age of peace, a Eucharistic reign of Jesus in which people will live in the divine will of God, much in the same way that Mary did. We're not all the, it won't be all the way there yet, but it will be so elevated that and so beyond anything that we could imagine that it is the final step before we enter into the Garden of Eden, before everything, the complete and total restoration of everything. And so I want to tie this together a little bit in Fatima, the angel of peace came and they, she, the angel taught the, the first prayer to the children. He came, he showed up with the blessed sacrament and he prostrated himself before the blessed sacrament and said, Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved son, president, all the tabernacles of the world for all the sins and outrages by which the father is offended. Okay. This is a paraphrase of divine mercy. So in other words, the divine mercy prayer was present at Fatima, right? So then we move forward and we receive the revelation of divine mercy from Jesus through Faustina. And in that, Jesus, again, perfects the prayer. I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. Now, one of the most important entries in the diary of Faustina is when Jesus told Faustina, the world will not have peace until it turns with trust to my mercy. Okay? Why is that so important? Because Jesus and Mary speak of peace in the same way. It is not an earthly peace. It's not what we've experienced the last 200 years of the United States where the world has you know, roughly kind of been at peace, you know, besides World War I and World War II. It is a divine peace. It is the third person of the Holy Trinity. It is the same flame of love that burns in the immaculate heart of Mary. And when Jesus says, I wish to heal the world by pressing it to my merciful heart, his merciful heart and the Eucharist are one and the same. And we have to understand that. So that's where it leads to the Eucharistic reign. That's what it points to, okay? Again, the divine mercy is to prepare us for the second coming of Jesus. So with the warning and this outpouring of Mary's heart, this flame of love, okay? So you have the warning and then you have an outpouring of love. Two separate things, which will bring us into a perfect love of God and then give way to the gift of divine mercy, which is nothing less than a new creation and a period of peace. Because it takes those two, along with the chastisements, to get man to repent in order to be open to receive the mercy of God. So the chastisements themselves and the upheaval that's going on, the rise of darkness in the world, all of it is happening for a reason. This is one of the reasons I can't understand why everybody is going so crazy over Pope Francis. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you can't change it. Everything is happening for a reason. Everything is, is happening in accordance with the will of God and in divine providence. And we have to know the end of that. We can't get sucked into the little arguments and the name calling and the bashing and, you know, you're a heretic and you're a viper and all that stuff. We have, we have to stand for truth, yes, but we can't let those things affect us in such a way that it's taking our eyes off the bigger picture, okay? So we have the warning and then we have the flame of love. Now, what is the flame of love of Mary's heart? Again, it is a perfect love for God. That flame, that word flame represents the Holy Spirit. It is a divine love. And that's what Paul speaks of that we're supposed to be filled with, right? We have not received a spirit to fall back into fear, but to cry out, Abba, Father, to praise God. 
And this is the reason that the reception of the Holy Spirit is so important. That is what's going to be poured out over the world. So I want to take um, a little bit of this. So I tied Fatima to divine mercy, okay? But it is through divine mercy, trust, to approach Jesus in perfect trust until we turn to trust in his mercy, okay? Then the world will be given peace. In other words, it will take the warning and, and an outpouring of the spirit to bring mankind to trust Jesus so much that we are finally ready to receive the period of peace, which is the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the triumph of the church giving away to a Eucharistic reign of Christ, okay? So the flame of love being poured out over the earth is the triumph of the church, which is the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. They are the same thing. And what you end up with is those who are left will live in that divine will of God. That is what brings peace to the world. Not policies, not politics, not presidents. Love for God from a human soul is what brings peace into the world. Okay, so they will walk and live in the divine will. Again, bringing to fulfillment the prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Um, in the writings of Luisa Picaretta, she prophesies about a flowering of the church. That will begin after the warning. So the warning itself will begin the blossom. That will, the church will begin to blossom. Although she's being persecuted and the world seems to be going at absolute hell, the church will blossom. This may not happen in a way that is physically seen. It will happen within the souls of the church. Remember, the church is not a building. The church is the people. Each one of us a living stone being built up into a temple of God. Okay? Very important to remember. Okay? Um, I don't think it's a coincidence that the church has announced a Eucharistic renewal. So we're moving in the right direction. That's a really, really important thing. Okay? Um, so the gift of divine mercy. Now let's move to that. To, the warning is to prepare us to receive the gift of divine mercy. These are the writings that come from um, Father Gobi that have been approved by the church. So the warning is not this, the, the whole outpouring of the Holy Spirit. If it were, then Jesus wouldn't, or Mary would not have told Father Gobi about another gift that we are to receive. So the warning prepares us to receive this gift of divine mercy. And this is so profound when you start to look at it and start to put the thing together. The gift of divine mercy is nothing less than the heart of Mary being placed within us a perfect love for God. The same flame of love that burns in Mary's hearts will burn in ours. And so every one of us that have prayed the rosary, that have done the first five Saturdays, that have consecrated ourselves to Our Lady, that understand what the warning is, that trust in Jesus, that receive the Eucharist in the way that we should, we have prepared ourselves to receive this gift. In other words, what I'm telling you is that God only wants to bless you. He wants to bless us. He wants to bless the world. So any other messages out there, any other websites out there that are you know, prophetic or talking about that are causing fear and anxiety, they are not from God because Jesus wants to give you grace. He wants to bless us in the most profound way Nothing like this has ever happened since the resurrection, says Our Lady. So I want to read to you a little bit from, this, uh, from these two messages. And um, kind of talk about it a little more. And then I'll go ahead and end this. But I think it's, I just wanted to do this video to encourage people. Because the world's going crazy. And we need, we need something to look forward to. Okay, so these are two. I'm trying to remember which one was first. Uh, this is Elizabeth Kendallman, okay? And I just want to read. Um, the Lord said that the spirit of Pentecost will flood the earth with his power. 
and a great miracle will gain the attention of all humanity. This will be the effect of grace of the flame of love. Due to the lack of faith, earth is entering into darkness, but the earth will experience a great jolt of faith. People will believe and will create a new world. By the flame of love, confidence and faith will take root. Now listen, this is important. The face of the earth will be renewed because something like this has not happened since the word became flesh. All earth, although flooded with sufferings, will be renewed by Our Lady's intercession. This is the outpouring of love. This is the outpouring of the flame of love of Mary's heart. This is the gift of divine mercy. What Jesus is giving us and offering to us and wants to place within us is the same love that his mother has for him. Perfect love for Jesus. Try to imagine that. The earth will be renewed. It's just not only the earth, but us. Paul speaks about this when he when he says we will be changed in the blink of an eye. We who are alive, who are left at the last trumpet, will be changed in the blink of an eye. Our Lady said, "Do not abandon the battle. Through the flame of love, a new era of grace, never before known on earth, will begin." Okay, so we have the warning. We have an outpouring of Our Lady's heart which is the flame of love, which is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Again, these I've said this before. There's three different events. Through those, the earth will be renewed. That is the gift of divine mercy, okay? Or how I understand it. Let me say that. I want to be very clear. Um, in one place... She says, uh, Our Lady said to Elizabeth, Earth is experiencing the calm before the storm, like a volcano about to explode. Earth is now in this terrible situation. The creator of hatred is boiling. I, the beautiful ray of dawn, will blind Satan. No dying soul should be condemned. My flame of love will now be lit. It will be a terrible storm, a hurricane that will want to destroy faith. In that dark night, now think about this. We're talking about a spiritual darkness. In that dark night, heaven and earth will be illuminated by the flame of love that I offer to souls. So we're talking about a spiritual illumination, okay? Not everything physically going dark, okay? In that dark night, it speaks, it speaks of uh, or echoes the saints with the dark night of the soul, of not feeling the presence of God, of experiencing these massive, massive temptations. Okay, again, a spiritual darkness. Our Lady also spoke, it leaps out to you with explosive power. When it pours out, my love will destroy the satanic hatred that contain, contaminates the world. Okay, so this... Notice that she says destroy. That means darkness no longer has power. Okay? So if the warning occurs and then the chastisements follow with the reign of an antichrist and a persecution of the church, how can the darkness be destroyed? When it pours out, when it pours out, my love will destroy the satanic hatred that contains that contaminates the world. The greatest number of souls will be set free. Nothing like this has existed before. This is the, my greatest miracle that I will do for all. No need for this miracle to be authenticated. I will authenticate the miracle in each soul. All will recognize the outpouring of the flame of love. How can we not recognize the outpouring of the flame of love when we will experience or, or know intimately within ourselves the very love that Mary has for Jesus on that level. 
Everyone will know it. Here's the other point I wanted to get out. Um, with, uh, and I'm just making a point. We hear it said over and over and over and over and over and over again that Vatican II was the reason that everything went wrong in the church, okay? These, these voices that say this are also voices that quote the saints and they're voices that, can, that quote uh, St. Saint, Saint Faustina, they quote Our Lady of Fatima, they quote all the authentic writings the ones that have been found to be true and are approved by the church. Here's one that I never hear them quote because these writings, as far as I know, have been approved by the church, the writings of Elizabeth Kendelman. Once Satan, once Satan is blinded, our Lord also promised the decrees of Vatican II will be fulfilled in an extraordinary way. In other words, the decrees of Vatican II have not yet been fulfilled and when they're fulfilled in an extraordinary way. Unbelievable. <laughs> Springtime in the church, I think uh, Pope John Paul called it. So very quickly, now I'm going to read to you from Father Gobi. Okay, and this is obviously talking about um, the warning uh, event itself. Okay, and I'm not sure who said this. It was either Jesus or Our Lady. I think it was Our Lady was who he received the locutions from. She says, tongues of fire will come down upon you all. My poor children, so ensnared and seduced by Satan and by all the evil spirits who during these years have attained their greatest triumph, and thus you will be illuminated by this divine light and you will see your own selves in the mirror of truth and in the holiness of God. It will be like a judgment in miniature, which will open the door of your heart to receive the great gift of divine mercy. You know, you see the, the difference or see the separation? It is by that experience, by that illumination of conscience of seeing ourselves in the divine light of truth that we will then, that effect of that will open our hearts to receive the gift of divine mercy. And again, when we go to the writings of Elizabeth Kittleman, we can see that when Mary's heart, when the flame of love of Mary's heart is poured out over mankind, it is so powerful that it renews the face of the earth. This is the gift of divine mercy. The gift of divine mercy <clears throat> is God himself through his mother giving us the same heart of Mary or very close to a heightened level. And I want to take you and I want to read to you this prophecy of Ezekiel because what Elizabeth Kindleman are talking about and Father Gobi are talking about what Our Lady was talking about at Fatima and what Jesus was talking about in the message of divine mercy was prophesied by Ezekiel. And I want to read that to you. It says, uh, it's entitled Regeneration of the People. And it is chapter 36. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. You guys can if you want to. But I'm just going to read a, a portion of it. And it is, uh, again, chapter 36. It's Regeneration of the Land which happens first, and then regeneration of the people, okay? It happens in that order. And I'm going to read verse 26 and 27. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you. What is this spirit? This, this spirit, this new spirit. We've received the Holy Spirit. We receive the spirit of baptism. We receive the more of the spirit of, of, at confirmation. We receive more of the spirit if we're charismatic and have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. This is something different. This is a regeneration of the people. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you. This is the flame of love. This is the spirit of Mary. This is the love that Mary has for God taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe all my decrees. 
You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people and I shall be your God. I will save you from all of your impurities. I will order the grain to be abundant and I will not send famine against you. I will increase the fruit on your trees and the crops in your fields. Thus you shall no longer bear among the nations the reproach of famine. It, the only way man, the human species, can live in the divine will of God perfectly would be to have the same heart as Mary, who is the only human being other than Adam and Eve to live in the divine will perfectly. This is what God wants to bless us with. This is the gift that is coming. And there is nothing more beautiful, nothing we could ever want more than to have a perfect love for God. That is the channel of grace. The Spirit will flow in the same way that the Spirit flows between the Father and the Son and through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We are being called into that. I think I have said before that what we'll be looking at is a world renewed, absolutely renewed in glory with a whole bunch more of Adam's and Eve's. Another way that I could say that is the way that I just said it. The people that enter into this period of peace will have a heart that is after Mary perfect love of her son, perfect love for his church, perfect love, respect, and adoration for the sacraments, especially the Eucharist. May God bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And may he grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.